I'm Nirav Lawal. I'm from Harvard Teacher Preparation Academy, from Mason Center, Tuscany, Long Beach. Same with everything, except my name is Matthew Suzuki. And the most important thing was we wanted it to move slow, very, very slow. Mm -hmm. Because if it's moving slow, then you can use a weaker propeller like this that's bigger. Mm -hmm. But also have it, the bigger propeller has other advantages to it. The whole theory behind having this big propeller is that no matter what rubber band you use, you're still going to get the same amount of spins, right? So the same rubber band is going to get 300, 400 spins every single time. However, the small red propellers that everyone else used, each one of their spins only moved a little bit of air. Every single one of our spins either was slow and it moved a whole lot of air. So that's why they managed to keep on going for so long. However, since it's spinning slower, it's also the speed of the air that it's moving is also slower. <clears throat> so that meant that the glider itself would have to be a whole lot lighter in order to actually remain airborne with this propeller. And then all of the other different facets of the airplane were based around that, making it as light as physically possible. Continuing on with the making of it as light as possible. Most uh, gliders, they just use these like solid pieces of balsa wood, but, or for the body, I mean. But in our case, we got a really thin sheet of balsa wood, uh, put it in water, and then it took a long time to like wrap it around the straw. And slowly, like we super glued the edges together to make it hollow, which worked nicely because we could just insert this in. One important thing about the wing is that the front edges are a little bit higher than the back edges. That's definitely, we kept it up. Uh, this morning on our way here, we realized that overnight, the front edge of the wing, they drooped down a lot. So this morning when we were testing it, it was getting like eight second flights because it wasn't able to keep on going. After we sort of t managed to push it up a little bit, then <clears throat> you saw the flight. Mm -hmm. pretty good. Well, <clears throat> part of it is just simply making one side heavier than the other. But our biggest thing is, if you can see it, compared to like the normal uh, main wing, like if you look, the tail wing is actually turned a bit. So that helps it steer to whichever direction you'd like it to go. The way, you have to look at how the propeller is actually spinning. Uh, even though our propeller design is different, our propeller still spins the same direction as all the other ones, right? So it's just like pretty simple physics. If the propeller is spinning this way, that means the main body of the plane is gonna be turned in the opposite direction, this way. So we know that the wing, the main body of the wing is still going to be, is already going to be turned. So we let that be turned and we just put the tail like this. So when the plane is turning, the tail is now straight. Because the tail doesn't serve any purpose in terms of keeping it up. It's just it's supposed to keep the back end of the plane sort of up there. So it doesn't just spin or like twist itself. And just for days and days, we just maintain to the gym like flying it, so oh, this isn't working, put some clay, fly it, this isn't working, change something. The most important part of an airplane is testing it, perfecting the flight. So make sure you have your plane done early. This is the best advice I can do.